welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend, and welcome to the broadcast. Thanks so much for joining us and allowing us to be part of your day. If you can right now, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Bible, and join me as my Bible sits open to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. I really encourage you to also get something on which you can jot a couple of notes. Today's study will be a little different. I try to give an outline almost every day of our study, but that's not the case today. I am going to be rattling through a number of Bible passages, and you need to jot them down. If you're driving your car, well, you're going to have to go back to our website and re-listen to the broadcast there. This study really is worth your time. So get your Bible, get it open to Romans chapter 1 if you can. I've got a gospel tract here in my hand I want to talk to you about. I want to talk you about getting a free sample packet of gospel tracts from us. But let me lead into our tangent study today. We who know Christ as Savior, we use a number of words to describe our lives prior to our salvation. And you really don't need to be a Bible college graduate to make this kind of a list. All you need is your Bible. And if you've just been halfway attentive at your church, you can make the list. We often use words like lost in sin. We use unsaved. We use the word non-believer, dead in sins. We say that people are perishing. They're under condemnation. And the list really could go on for a while. So here is my question. How dead is dead in sin? How lost were we in sin before receiving Christ? How condemned were we? Now, believe it or not, not all who love Christ, genuinely love Christ, genuinely love his Bible, we don't all agree on this answer. We also need to understand that our answer will affect our evangelism. It will affect how we view that dear, sweet little old lady that lives two doors down from us. We like her a lot. She makes great cookies, but she's never received Jesus as her Savior. So really, is she condemned? Will she really spend forever in the lake of fire without possibility of escape? Let's talk towards that end today. Get your Bible it's something with which to take some notes. I mentioned having a gospel tract here in my hand. Now, a gospel tract is an evangelism tool. It's a tool to help us share the gospel with people. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I mentioned that free sample packet. It contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts in it. There's 40 tracts in that. I want to give it to you free. One of the tracts in there is this one entitled Infant Baptism? At the bottom, bottom of the face of the track, it says, what does the Bible say? Well, friend, what does the Bible say about infants and babies being baptized? When you open this track up, you're going to find one big, large, bold word going catty corner across the track. And that one word is the word nothing. Nowhere in the Bible where you find where the Bible says we ought to have our children baptized. On the back panel, it describes who should be baptized, how to be baptized, when should they be baptized, and that baptism should only come after that individual has made a personal profession of Jesus Christ as Savior. Friend, a lot of people think they're going to heaven because they were baptized as a baby. May I politely say to you, when you were a baby, if you got baptized, you were made wet. You may have made your parents and grandparents feel good, 
but nothing with that could wash away the sin stain on your soul. Please, at the end of the program, my announcer will make known to you three ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. Get that to us. We'll send you that free sample packet. If you cannot wait to the very end of the program, go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible is open to Romans chapter 1, beginning of verse 24, here's what the Bible says. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. I'm jumping to verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Stop, please, right there. We are in a series of studies through the book of Romans, chapters 1, 2, and 3, and the point of those three chapters is not a secret thing. If you read them carefully, you're going to see that there's one key point being made, and that is that all people, no matter of their religious background, their social status, or their cultural upbringing, all people are unrighteous before God due to their sin. Their unrighteous state means that they are condemned before the judgment bar of the holy God who is pure righteousness. Now, they all are lost. All people are lost. They are dead in sin. They are perishing. They are under condemnation. Why is that the case? Because they were born into this life with a death sentence already stamped upon them. And those that have heard the gospel plan and rejected it, they stay condemned. Those who have never heard the gospel but have taken the truth that can be known of God found in creation and they've altered it and altered the God of creation as verses 18 through 20 talk about, those people too stay condemned before God. But now I ask just how bad is this sin state of a lost person? How dead are they to God and in their spiritual life? Are they totally dead? Are they almost totally dead? Do they have a little bit of a spark of spirituality still in them? Well, the verses here, beginning at Romans chapter 1, verse 18, through the end of the chapter, is one of the classic passages which describe just how perverted, just how corrupted, just how twisted spiritually, righteous, nice, righteously say, speaking, just how twisted all people are due to sin. Now, let me remind all of us here that we can answer this question with the Word of God. It's going to talk very straightforward and bluntly as it talks about each and every person who is born, and it's going to say that they are a condemned sinner. Let me begin with this one. Jot down the reference. Psalm 51 verse 5 says, we were all shapen in iniquity, in a twisted spiritual state. That word verse means that they are all, at the very, from the very moment of conception, we are corrupted sinners. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. Those two words, desperately wicked, translate a Hebrew word, and it means that we are incurable in our sin. There is no hope for us. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3 say that we are, by our very nature, human nature, sinful human nature, we are children of wrath. It says Satan is our father, and it says that we act out from our sinful actions here due to our fleshly desires and our wicked minds and thoughts. Now, that then brings us to the whole issue of our minds, about our thinking, Surely there must be something up there in our brains that we could use to grasp our condition and our need for salvation. There's got to be something up there, isn't there? Well, let me ask you, do you want me to give you the polite political answer or do you want me to give you the Bible answer? 
I think you want the Bible answer. That's why you're listening. So here we go. Write these passages down. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says that the unsaved person cannot understand spiritual things. It just says that flat outly. They cannot understand spiritual things. In 2 Corinthians 4, beginning at verse 4, it says that Satan is blinding the minds of lost people so that they won't see their need for the gospel and understand the gospel. In the book of Romans, chapter 5 and verse 7, we're told there that the minds of the unsaved person, they hate God and they cannot be subject to God's laws. I'm going to say that again. Romans 5, 7 says the minds of an unsaved person hates God and cannot be subject to God's laws. That's the Bible answer. It's sure not very flattering, but it is the Bible answer. So just how dead in sin, just how lost in sin are all of us without Jesus Christ as Savior. Well, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 6 has probably the quickest and most straightforward answer. It says this, Isaiah 1 6, from the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. Now, those words were used to describe the spiritual state of the incorrigible Jewish people in Isaiah's day, but these words also describe the condition of all sinners of every age. Our verses here in Romans 1 tell us three times that God has given us up so that we'll just go ahead and act out the rebellious nature that is in all of us. God gave them up. God gave them up. God gave them over. We read all three of those statements here in our verses. How dead How dead in sin are you, dear listening friend, without Jesus as your Savior? How dead are you? Well, if you'd let me pick up on that picture in Isaiah 1 where God uses the picture of a human body to describe sinners, you can look from your very top of your spiritual head to the bottom of your spiritual foot, and there is not one square inch in you, not one place at all of any spiritual health or hope. You are incurable. There is nothing you can do, but Isaiah 1 does give some instructions. It says four things later on in that book of Isaiah chapter 1. Number one, he says, hear the word of God. Number two, stop offering God your offering. Stop it. Number three, repent of your sin. Verse 16 says that. And then number four, it says, let God wash you and heal you. Verse 18, let him do what you can do. You're incurable. There's no human help here. So stop offering your offerings and come to God in your ugly, sinful state and let him heal your sin sick soul. Now, the question we now need to ask is this. Well, since the Bible is so clear about how sinfully perverted we all are, why then do so many unsaved people do so many, well, morally good things? Why don't people act out the full depth of their sinfulness that's inside of them? Well, that's going to be our study on Wednesday's broadcast. Please come with us for that time. But right now, get ready to get that sample packet of tracks. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.